Hey class, it's Mr. Jones. I am going to go over the assignment for today. Um, we are going to go over another speech. This time it's by Social and Truth and it's called Ain't I a Woman? Um, this is one we read last year that a lot of our students kind of enjoyed. It's kind of short and to the point, but a little background story on Social and Truth. I'll read the little biography that's right here. Social and Truth. Um, was an African-American women's rights activist and abolitionist who fought to end slavery. Truth was born into slavery, but escaped to freedom in 1826. Ain't I a Woman is her most famous speech, which she delivered without preparation at the Ohio Women's Rights Convention in 1851. Two versions of Truth's speech exist today. The original version of the speech, which appears below, was transcribed by an attendant of Truth's speech, Marius Robinson. Truth collaborated with Robinson on the transcription before it was published. The second version, which is viewed as an inaccurate representation of true speech, was transcribed by Francis Dana Gage, who did not collaborate with Truth before its publication in 1863 and 1881. And you read in the bold, this is kind of my... Um, no, it's not. That's not the one I put in there. Uh... I can find it. So all my directions say is um, that you're going to go through and you're going to highlight. I think it was pathos, red or blue, ethos, green or pathos, red or blue, red, red or pink. Um, so pathos, red or pink. Ethos, green and logos, blue. And you all, whenever I say that, I don't mean that I need every word in this text highlighted. I just mean if you read something and you just think in your head, oh, that's, <coughs> oh, bless me. Um, <coughs> so if you just um, read something and you're like, hey, that's pathos, you're going to highlight it. I don't need every word in the text highlighted. That's important. Um, you're also going to be answering the assessment questions at, at the end. Um, I think there, yeah, there are four. Um, and you all, I turned on guided reading mode, which means these little Q1s, Q2s, Q3s, like the red, you can only get to this part of the, te the text after Q1 until you answer question one and you get it right. So it's important that you read and you're comprehending the text. You know, I, like we go through all these speeches, we go through everything looking for rhetoric, but at the same time, I got to make sure that you're reading to comprehend reading to comprehend or understand the text as well. So make sure that you do that. You're just going to answer the guided questions. They're all multiple choice. They're fairly easy if you made, if you pay attention in the least. Once you're finished with the reading and the guided questions, you're going to go and finish the assessment questions. Um, like I said, I think there's four, but that shouldn't take you long at all. Um, so after that, we are going to do some IXL. It's a lot similar um, to the IXL that you all did last week um, on ethos, identifying ethos, logos, pathos in advertisements, except now we're going to um, find them in text. So let me get logged in. I'll show you how to get there and kind of go through a question with you real quick. You're going to go to learning. You're going to go to ninth grade language arts. And instead of I dot one, which is what we did last, we we're going to I dot two, which is use appeals and ethos, pathos, and logos in persuasive writing. So you're going to read which statement primarily appeals to pathos, which is emotion, to support the position that Americans place too much emphasis on self reliance and not enough on community. So you read both of these. Like most su suburban nights, I live in a house with its own yard and fences between my neighbor's properties and mine, which effectively discourages the use of shared space and frequent communication. And then let's read this. If we as a community decide to set aside our isolating independence and share many of life's simple tools, such as lawnmowers, bicycles, or internet connection, we would be far less wasteful. So just based off the tone, you know, kind of depicted in these two, I think this one has a more emotional mood. So you all, that's the biggest thing is read it read both of them um because whenever i was doing this last night i got one or two wrong just because i didn't read them both make sure that you read them both answer them um i'm gonna put this in the grade book as this, 
um, out of 90. So whatever your smart score is out of, you know, whenever you finish, if it's 95, it's going in as 95 out of 90. Or if it's a 50, it's going in as a 50 out of 90. You all, I think if you all read the question and read both answers, um, then I think you all could get to 100 on these. Um, but I just want to get you all more familiar with, you know, finding rhetoric, you know, not only in advertisements, but in text to, you know, getting us ready for the unit test that's going to be later on this week. So, you all, I know this was a very quick video. I do apologize for that. Um, but I just want to kind of go over everything with you all. If you all have any questions at all, please shoot me an email. Um, I will be around my computer most of the day today. So thank you all for watching. And like I said, if you have any questions at all, shoot me an email.